Greetings and welcome to the introduction to astronomy. One of the things that I like to do in each of my introductory astronomy classes is to begin the class with the astronomy picture of the day from the NASA website that is apod.nasa.gov apod. And today's picture for August 18th of 2023. Well, it is titled Northern Pluto. So what do we see here? Well, what you might guess by the title, this is the northern portion of Pluto. And we see this in an image taken by the New Horizons spacecraft, which passed by Pluto back in July of 2015. So eight years ago now that it flew by the Pluto system, exploring that and giving us our only detailed images of this dwarf planet. Now, we had some great surprises there when we passed by Pluto. We expected probably a very heavily cratered and dead object out there. And we do see some craters here and you can see craters scattered around this image. However, there's also a lot of other structures that are visible as well. There are some regions that are very flat and smooth. Now, when we look at objects in the solar system, how old the surface is tells is dependent on how many craters it has. So the more craters it has, the older the surface. Now that doesn't mean the planets are older than one another, one another, they're all essentially the same age. However, what it does mean is that they've been exposed to the surface without any kind of weathering or erosional or geological events that might wipe out the craters. So in other words, it, all things being the same, Earth should have just as many craters as our moon, which should have just as many craters as Pluto. We expect that cratering rates across the solar system were roughly the same. So why do some objects have more craters than others? Well, some objects like Earth are volcanically active and volcanic activity and plate activity will wipe out craters over millions of years. We also have weathering effects on some planets that wipe out craters. So wind and rain, for example, here on Earth will wipe out craters that would survive for billions of years on our moon. And we see that looking at Pluto, it's something in between this that we do see some craters, but we do see also some very flattened areas showing that Pluto has been active much more recently than some long dead objects, perhaps. So we see it gives us some understanding a way to understand how these surfaces have been changed over time. Now this part of Pluto was actually named uh, after Percival Lowell and it's named the Lowell Regio and what it it was named after Lowell who founded the Lowell Observatory as you might guess and it was one of the things he started was a search for a, Plut a planet out beyond Neptune. And his pushing for this search eventually led to the discovery of Pluto in 1930. So searching for an object out there, he believed very strongly that there was another object out beyond Pluto, thinking it was a planet. Of course, we now know that Pluto is far too small and that there are a lot of other similarly sized objects out there in the Kuiper belt with Pluto. So here we get to see that, but it's named in his honor uh, for the one who pushed a little bit to get the, the without that push and without his observatory, we would not have discovered Pluto nearly as early as we ended up discovering it. So that was our picture of the day for August 18th of 2023. It was titled Northern Pluto. We'll be back again tomorrow for the next picture previewed to be ringed ice giant. So we'll see what that is about tomorrow. And until then, have a great day, everyone. And I will see you in class.